right. So if you have your Bibles, <clears throat> I'm going to be reading from Exodus chapter 20. And I'm also going to be jumping back and forth through Genesis. So just be prepared. <laughs> well, speak clearly. I'll try. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the last in the sermon series on the Ten Commandments. If you were here for the first one, we talked about the first two commandments. <clears throat> that the Lord says, I am the Lord your God. Traditionally, this is thought of as the first commandment. And the second commandment says, you will have no other gods before me. You shall not make unto thee any image or idol. And so the first commandment sets up that our God is set apart, is sacred, is holy. And the second says that there is no image of our God that we can make. The third commandment, you'll remember, I preached online because we weren't able to meet that week. And it says, you will not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Everything about God is sacred. Everything is holy. If it is of God, it is sacred, even the Lord's name. And we don't pronounce the name of God in English. We don't typically. Because the name of God is the four letter YHWH, or in Hebrew, Yod He Vav He. And we don't pronounce that. We don't know how to pronounce it. We haven't in over a thousand years. But the Germans in Martin Luther's time thought it would be pronounced Jehovah. And modern scholars think it might be pronounced Yahweh. But really, if you want to take the Lord's name in vain, there are about 24 different possible pronunciations. So good luck with that one. You got to be real determined if you're going to do it today. But that's the point of these first three commandments. Everything that is of the Lord is sacred. We can't make an image or idol because we are the image. We are the idol. And that's the point of these next commandments, that everything of God is sacred. And since we are made in his image, that means every one of us is sacred. Not only each one, but all together. Because in the beginning of, of the Bible, it says, God made mankind in God's image. In the image of God, God made them. Male and female, God made them. Which means each person, regardless of gender, all of humanity. And when we look through the commandments, this is what we're supposed to realize about them. We can take them in any order. In fact, they're almost arranged like a Jewish poem, like the, a Hebrew poem, in that you can take them in pairs. You can take them at the beginning and the end or work out from the middle. And as you compare each one to one another, you'll find new and different meanings, all the different ways they interact. The next one shows us how we are sacred and that it, re that it relates to the sacredness of God. The fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. On it you will do no work. Now that one is to each one of us, right? But then it says, neither you or your son or your daughter or your male slave or your female slave or your cattle or the resident foreigner in your gates because it applies not only to each of us, but we can't impose that on someone else. Have you ever worked somewhere where you weren't able to take Sundays off? Yeah. So many people have. You can't take Sundays off. Even if it's a religious reason. That's right, even for religious reasons. And that employer, you aren't violating the Sabbath when you do this as a worker, because you don't have a say in the matter. The power structure is set up in such a way you don't have advocacy for yourself, but your employer does. Your employer has the choice of whether or not to be open on Sundays. And when they make their son, their daughter, their male slave, their female slave, their <laughs> cattle, the resident foreigner in their gates work on a Sunday or a Saturday if they're Jewish or a Thursday if they're Hindu, <laughs> 
or a Friday if they're Muslim, then that employer has violated the Sabbath. This is how it's set up. Remember the sacredness of others. And remember that you yourself are sacred. You are made in the image of God. Do not take that for granted. And then the fifth commandment, the final one at the end of this tablet. Remember that Moses came down with two tablets in his hand, five commandments on each. What's the last one on this, on this stone slab? Honor your father and mother. Well, it's interesting that the first four commandments all have to do with the sacredness of God, but there's two stone tablets. The other ones all have to do with how we treat one another. What about this fifth one? Honor your father and mother. Now, I intentionally didn't preach a sermon on this because I know my parents will hold it against me to the end of my day, to the end of their days. But <laughs> this is a very important commandment because it shows don't we call God our Father? Don't we call Jesus our brother? This is the example that we have of the divine in our world. Our families fill this role. And in Hebrew, the term for God or God the Father is Elohim. Okay? In Genesis, it says Yahweh Elohim. And then it refers to the Holy Spirit when it says the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the deep. What it says about the Spirit is the Ruach Elohim. In the book of Isaiah, this is the Ruach Kadosh, the breath of God, the Spirit of God, or the Ruach Kadosh, the Holy Spirit. And that is female. It's feminine when we talk about the presence, the Spirit, the breath of God. And so when at the end of the commandments it says, honor your father and honor your mother, there is God your father and God the Holy Spirit, male and female. This tablet is still speaking of God. It is not only talking about those that God has placed in our lives through random chance, by the way. Aren't our families random chance? We didn't choose to be born into this family. God chose to make us this way. God chose our family. Just like he says to Jeremiah, before you were in the womb, I knew you. And this is how God chooses for us to know him, that he is leading our life. At the top of that next set of commandments, just as God said, at the top of the first slab, he says, I am the Lord your God. At the top of the second slab, the sixth commandment, you will not kill. That is how important this commandment is. It's the very top. And in Genesis, we can see why. Because Genesis chapters 1 through 9 really drive home why this is this sixth commandment is so important in the beginning god is teaching adam and eve to walk and talk with god he's teaching them righteous living but he tells them if you eat of the fruit of this tree on that day you will die well, what happens to adam and eve they eat of the fruit of the tree do they die on that very day no, they just get punished. that's right god exiles them he doesn't punish them. He doesn't kill them for what they have done. The punishment was going to be execution, and he pardons them. But he curses them. But notice the curses. The curses are that they are the denied the comfort of the garden. They can no longer be there. They will have to work for everything they do. From their own work, they will live not from God's any longer. When Cain kills Abel, what does God say to him? Your brother's blood cries up to me from the, from the very ground. What is the punishment? Well, execution. And what does God do to Cain? He gives him a mark and protects him for all his days. God chooses 
not to punish, not to execute Cain for what he's done, for the very first murder. And when Cain, and the thought is maybe Cain will come to repentance. Maybe Cain will learn and become a better person. Well, seven generations later, we have Lamech, Cain's descendant, who says to his wife, today I have murdered a young man who wounded me. And if God avenged Cain seven times, God will avenge Lamech 77 times. Cain's descendants haven't learned from their mistakes. In fact, what they've learned is that with, if they commit murder, God will protect them. God won't punish them. There is no justice in this world. And what do we see in the next chapter, in chapter 7, 8, and 9? The world was so wickedness, God, was so wicked that God could hardly bear to look at it. Even though people were calling on the name of the Lord, they weren't listening to what the Lord was telling them. And so God sent a flood, wiped them all out, except for the one righteous family that he could find, that of Noah. And he said to Noah, when he got off the ark, I'm going to make a covenant with you. And what does that covenant start with? The very first commandment. It says, Whomever sheds human blood, by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God, God has made humanity. God wants Noah to understand, your life is sacred, just as you recognize that God is sacred. And if you abuse, if you harm a human life, you have harmed God. This is the first commandment for this very reason. It's in the first covenant that God makes with Noah. It's in the very next covenant that God makes with Moses. And it is absolutely central. We must recognize those two top commandments as related. I am the Lord your God. You will not murder. And... When I wrote this sermon, I wasn't planning on there being a high-profile murder in the news. <laughs> but what kind of society are we if we do not punish those who murder? If we allow those who are in positions of authority, who are supposed to deliver justice in our world, if they go about murdering, Will God not judge us as he did in the days of Noah? Because this is exactly why he judged the world in the days of Noah. But further, the rest of these are often thought of as a way of organizing our system of justice, but it's not. It's, a, a, it's about how we view one another, and how we view our relationship with God. It starts with, you will not kill, and then goes on, you will not commit adultery. Because if you can't recognize the connections between one another as valid, then how are you going to recognize your connection with God as valid, or others' connection with God? How are we going to reach out to people whose faith differs from ours? How are we going to say to one another, I see that the Spirit is working in your life and recognize that they have the truth just as we do? He says you will not steal. We have to, to recognize the value of one another and of the things that we have. You will not bear false witness against your neighbor. And here I'm flogging a dead horse. But the last three, and these, I think, aren't always connected when we number the commandments, but they are in the Jewish ordering, and they are the way that I've numbered them in your, in your flyer there. It says, you will not covet your neighbor's house, you will not covet your neighbor's wife, or his slaves, or his animals, or anything of thy neighbor. And notice how that relates to the commandment about the Sabbath. It's almost the same list. Just as you aren't to work on the Sabbath, nor make anyone else work, you're not supposed to, on the Sabbath, look at your neighbor and say, you know, 
I really wish I had as much as they did. Because the moment you do, aren't you working back up the list? You, you might bear false witness against your neighbor to steal his house, steal his wife, and steal his animals and his donkey. When you get to the bottom of the list, if you fail that commandment, you will start working your way back up towards the top. You start to bear false witness, to slander, to steal, to commit adultery, and even to kill. That's what King David did when he looked across the city and saw Bathsheba bathing on the roof. And he said, I'd like to have my neighbor's wife. And he sought to steal her, but he couldn't steal her. So instead, he planned murder. He worked his way back up the commandments, and he committed murder. And so we look at these commandments, not literally, but metaphorically. We look at how they interact with one another. And if you wonder, am I supposed to take these literally, consider that there are 13 statements in the Ten Commandments. The first thing you have to do to approach the Ten Commandments is number them. You must come up with an interpretation in order to even approach them. Because without that interpretation, you can't get to the literal Word of God where in Exodus and in Deuteronomy, it literally says there are Ten Commandments. Back in Jesus' day, this was levied as a uh, slight against Jewish philosophers, as the Greeks called them. They would say, what do the Jews know about philosophy? They can't even count because their Ten Commandments have 13 statements. But it is quite intentionally there. There are 13 statements because before you can approach them, you have to decide for yourself what is valuable about them. You have to decide what is important. And that's why the Catholics and the Lutherans number, you will not covet your neighbor's wife as separate from you will not covet your neighbor's house or anything of your neighbor. Because they say, well, the wife is a person, that's not a possession. And they say that, well, that's different. And it is. You, that is absolutely true. But to come to that, you have to number the commandments. And I number them differently because I think, in my view, if you take that too literally, well, then women can't approach the commandments at all unless they're um, coveting their lesbian neighbor's wife. <laughs> so I don't see it the same way. I think that you have to be able to reverse those pronouns anyways. But what do you think about this? As you go through, think of this as a poem and look at how they interact. Think of them as metaphorical and really challenge yourself to think about these commandments. Because in a couple months, we have Pentecost coming up after Easter. Our church has its bylaws review. And we're going to be deciding what are our values as a congregation and we'll be revising our bylaws. And this is a fantastic guide. But what do we think? What do we want? Who do we want to be? That's the invitation of the Ten Commandments. And as all scripture hangs on these commandments, it is the invitation of all scripture. So let's look to one another, to the sacredness in ourselves, in each other, and in all of humanity as we consider the sacredness of God. Amen? Amen. Amen.